Right, let's continue the story. Sanctuary of the Inn. Sunday, the 24th of May, 1914, Galloway, Scotland. I assume we got on that train. The game's not saying anything, or doing anything. Ah, the occupants of the carriage were an old shepherd and his dog, a wall-eyed br wall brute I mistrusted. The man was asleep, and on the cushions beside him was that morning's Scotsman. It's going to bark at me, isn't it? Right. Um. I want to know if there's any kind of no news from London. General notices. Church of Scotland's doing stuff. First class office posts. East Coast route. Fourth pleasure sales. Royal Lyceum Theatre. Amusements, contracts, banks, insurance. Specific articles for sale. Okay. Ooh, there's a few other pages. Police questioning suspect. London Sunday morning. Scotland Yard's top officers have been called into action following the brutal slaying of a decorated British officer in an affluent apartment block in London near Portland Place. The killing took place during last week's Empire Day celebrations. The as yet unnamed man was discovered in the first floor flat on Saturday morning by its valet, a Mr. Paddock. Intriguingly, the victim was not in charge of the apartment and the owner was not to be found. Even more intriguing is the arrest of a local milk milkman found whistling in the hallway of the apartment, a mere five minutes away from Oxford Street. Mr. Paddock sprang the alarm and had the young man arrested. Scotland Yard Commissioner Mr. Uh, McGillivray said his top officers were currently interviewing the suspect. This is one of the most horrendous murders we have had in this part of London for some time. The fact that it happened on Empire Day just makes the whole affair, the whole affair event more abhorrent. We will make sure that no stone is left unturned in bringing the killer to justice. Mr. Paddock had informed the captain that the dead man's name was Captain, Sir Captain Digby of the 40th Gurkhas and he had been at the apartment for four days. As yet, Scotland Yard has been unable to confirm the identity. The details of the murder are also sparse. This is the second dead body to have been found in this very ap apartment block in the past week. Just six days earlier, an American businessman identified as a Mr. Scott Canavan was found in his apartment having committed suicide. Neighbour Mrs. Twiston said, We've never seen anything like it. This is a respectable part of the city, safe behind closed doors. At least until now. I'm all shook up. I've cancelled my milk order. McGillivray assured residents there is nothing to be concerned about and that there are no apparent connections between the deaths and that the latest killi killing is most likely the result of a financial dispute. Right. Poor milkman. Few things. Oh, it's highlighting important stuff, is it? Missing airmen fear disaster to Mr. Hamill. Uh, suffragette outrages. Picture of damage at Royal Scottish Academy. King's portrait slashed with an axe. It's news. Oh dear. Empire Day celebration. Rain interferes with Hyde Park parade. I'm worried by this because it says killer on the run. New twists and turns in the event of the Portland Place murder as Scotland Yard releases its prime suspect and reveals that the true criminal has escaped the capital. But Scotland Yard Commissioner Mr. McGillivray was unwilling to elaborate on further details as to whom the murderer might be. We have reason to believe the killer has left London by one of the northern lines. Because a southern line from London would be to France, really. Um, we no longer have reason to suspect that the milkman is our murderer or has any connection with the killing of Captain Theophilus Digby found dead earlier this week. Captain Digby is reported to have been on home leave and staying with a friend in an apartment near London, London's affluent Portland Place Apartments. Chief Investigating Officer, Mr. Scaife, told the, the Times this was a brutal slaying of an honourable man. We urge anyone who may have seen or heard anything on the night of the 23rd of May to come forward and make yourself known. The owner of the apartment in question, a Mr. Richard Hannay, is still missing. Doggy. I could smell the alcohol on his breath. Okay, he's... so. Okay, so the, the, the dog's just kind of being protective of, of the master, by the sounds of it. 
We were approaching the station at which I had got uh, at which I had gotten out yesterday. Yes. The potato digging station master had been gingered up into some activity, for the west-going train was waiting to let us past. From it descended three men who were asking him questions. Uh-oh. Oh dear. Sitting well back in the shadow, I watched them carefully. Yes. The moors. All the, all the party looked out across the moor where the white road departed. I hope they were going to take up my tracks there. Three men. I suppose that they were the local police who had been stirred up by Scotland Yard and had traced me as far as this one-horse siding. One of them had a book and took down notes. Station staff. The old potato digger seemed to have turned peevish. The child who had collected my ticket was talking volubly. Loudly, I'm guessing. As we moved away from that station, the old shepherd began to stir. Maybe I should be sitting in a different set, set of seats. You're on a train, traveling east towards Dumfries, in Scotland. Oh, oh, that's what comes of being a teetotaler. I express my surprise that in him, in him I should have met a blue rib ribbon stalwart. I also thought he would have kept up the Scottish accent. But hey, obviously not. Okay. My plan had been to get out at some station down the line, but the train suddenly gave me a better chance. I looked out and saw that every carriage window was closed and no human figure appeared in the landscape. Open. I assume we're going out. So I dropped quickly from the carriage. It would be it would have been all right but for that infernal dog. I could not have made a more public departure if I had left with a bugler and a brass band. Happily, the drunken shepherd provided a diversion. He and his dog, which was attached by a rope to his waist, suddenly cascaded out of the carriage. And he's drunk, so... I might get all... Right, this is your chance, Richard. Run. They had forgotten all about me. I looked back, but there was nothing in the landscape. For the first time, I felt the terror of the hunted on me. It was not the police that I thought of, but the other folk, who knew that I knew Scudder's secret and dared not let me live. I was certain that they would pursue me with a keenness and vigilance unknown to British law, and that once their grip closed on me, I should find no mercy. Ooh, purple heather. The mood did not leave me until I had reached the rim of mountains and flung myself panting on a ridge high above the young waters of the river. Oops, clickety. 
I have eyes like a hawk, but I could see nothing moving in the whole countryside. Then I looked into the blue May sky, and there I saw that which set my pulse racing. I, I was as certain as if I had been told that that aeroplane was looking for me, and that it did not belong to the police. These heather hills were no sort of cover if my enemies were in the sky, and I must find a different kind of sanctuary. The trees. Ooh, a monoplane. Or an aeroplane. Or a plane, as we know them now. Uh, I kept onwards. Hmm. Another house. Bigger than the other one. About six in the evening, I came out of the moorland. Towards. Yes, we have no other choice, do we? The Scottish Moors. Something around here, wasn't it? Right, that's one thing we can click on. As when a griffin through the wilderness with winged stick. As when a griffin through the wilderness with winged step or yep. hill and moody dale pursues the aromas. Arum, arum, aromaspian. Yes, w wigged, winged, the house. Peat smoke and savoury roast floated from the house. We're done. Guessing we advance. Good evening to you. It's a fine night for the road. Is that place an inn? At your service. I'm the landlord, sir. And I hope you will stay the night for, to tell you the truth, I've had no company for a week. Ah. <laughs> uh. I don't know why he's dropped the Scottish accent. I pulled myself up on the parapet of the bridge and filled me pipe. I began to detect an ally. You're young to be an innkeeper? My father died a year ago and left me the business. I lived there with my grandmother. It's a slow job for a young man, and it wasn't my choice of profession. Which was? Writer. He actually blushed. I want to write books. And what better chance could you ask? Man, I've often thought that an innkeeper would make the best storyteller in the world. Oh, not now. M maybe in the old days when you had pilgrims and ballad makers and high women and mail coaches on the road. But not now. Nothing comes here but motor cars full of fat women who stop for lunch and a fisherman or two in the spring and the shooting tenants in August. There's not much material to be got out of that. <laughs> I want to see life, to travel the world and write things like Kipling and Conrad. But the most I've done yet is to get some verses printed in Chambers' journal. I looked at the inn standing golden in the sunset against the brown hills. I've knocked a bit about the world, and I wouldn't despise such a hermitage. Do you think that adventure is only found in the tropics or among gentry in red shirts? Maybe you're rubbing shoulders with it at this moment. That's Ooh. what Kipling says. Brother romance and all unseen bromance brought up the 915. Um, yes. But here's a true tale for you then. And a month from now, you can make a novel out of it. You're going to tell him about what's going on. Richard, do you want to get him killed? Uh, a story of epic proportions. Mr. Richard Hannay was a successful mining magnate from Kimberley, Australia. Then his luck changed and he ran into serious financial troubles. We're here for the money! I owe you nothing! And he could never play the hat in Monopoly again. Thugs chased Hane across the Kalahari to German Africa, pursuing him across the ocean. I was just wondering if they'd had a second boat coming up to chase him, but obviously not. They use trains a lot in this game, don't they? Oh, and is that when he came back up? The equator? 
this somehow relevant? Yes. Run again! Run! You can't really run much on a boat, can you? He got away and fled to London. Yes. It's a bit further south than that, I think. But they tracked him down. My hat! They had killed his friend. And were chasing Hannah yet. Uh, oh, so he's twisting this tail already? Hmm. You're looking for adventure? Well, you found it here. The devils are after me and the police are after them. It's a race that I mean to win. By God! It's all pure Ryder Haggard and Conan Doyle! You believe me? <laughs> of course I do! I believe everything out of the common. The only thing to distrust is the normal. He was very young, but he was the man for my money. I think they're off my track for the moment, but I must lie close for a couple of days. Can you take me in? He caught my elbow in his eagerness and drew me towards the house. You're abusing him, Hannay. As I entered the inn porch, I heard from far off the beat of an engine. So, okay, so they probably don't know you're... Oh, dear. This is the only building around. They probably know you're here. He gave me a room at the back of the house, with a fine outlook over the plateau. I smoked in a chair till daylight, for I could not sleep. The next morning, I wanted some time to myself, so I invented a job for him. He had a motor bicycle, and I sent him off next morning for the daily paper, which usually arrives with the post in the late afternoon. I told him to keep his eyes skinned and make note of any strange figures he saw, keeping a special sharp lookout for motors and aeroplanes. Then I sat down in real earnest to Scudder's notebook. Let's look at the other. Can I look at anything else? Inkeeper study covered. Is there anything else to look here? No, there's nothing. The new newspaper? Fulton Place murderer in Scotland. Borders police mobilised. London police have reason to believe that the Portland Place murderer has travelled north into Scotland in his bid to escape the authorities. It has also come to light that the milkman has provided damning evidence against the flat's owner, Mr Richard Hannay, in connection to the murder of Captain Theophilus Digby. He told me that he was playing a game, said the milkman. He needed to be a milkman for half an hour, and I believed him. But he never came back. He took my hat and coat, too, the thief. The milkman's uniform has since been discovered be behind a hoarding in an alleyway opposite Mr. Hannay's apartment. Fear not, if there is a <clears throat> sorry. Fear not, if there is a killer in Scotland, we'll track him down," said Lothian and Borders Police Chief Mr. Hamish Smith. "We'll be putting extra resources into this man hunt. Should anyone spot Mr. Hannay, a 37-year-old man of average height and build, they should not try and apprehend him. Hannay is known to be a military man with considerable skills with weaponry." And stuff about the suffragettes. More going on there. The Balkans. The Albanian revolt. Rebels release prisoners. Gerazzo, May 24th. The insurgents have released all their prisoners. Prince William yesterday rode out to the outposts. Everything is now quiet here. 